we have come uh, a long way. You know, if this meeting were happening a year ago or a year and a half ago, um, I, I looked around this room, I, I probably would have known about 90% of the people here. Um, now this industry is so big, uh, lucky for you, I only know less than half of you. Um, so, you know, this thing has grown beyond any one person and will continue to grow beyond any one person because it's about marijuana. Human beings have loved and desired marijuana for thousands upon thousands of years. That will never end. to mankind by God. Genesis chapter 1 verse 29 says the Lord God gives us all seed bearing plants and saw that it was good. Uh, marijuana, last time I checked, is a seed bearing plant. So it's ours. They can't take it away from us and they never will even though they keep trying. Uh, back to earth though. I do, I want to start off with some good news. And we've got some great news. Last week, uh, we found out that we won the appeal on the Frank Marzano case. Now, this is great news for everyone in the room on a number of counts. And, you know, Frank Marzano has not gotten the press that uh, the Stacey Clendenin appeal got, which was a mixed result for our uh, community. The Frank Marzano result is a resounding victory. Very briefly, here's what happened. Frank Marzano and I tried the case back in 2007 in Larimer County, which is probably the least marijuana-friendly jurisdiction that I'm aware of. Anybody here have the misfortune of being from Larimer County? Just a couple of them. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, you might want to move out of there. Um, Larimer County tries Frank Marzano. He's got 42 pages of medical marijuana documentation in his home. Uh, they bust in, do an illegal, uh, unconstitutional search. He's got 80-some plants. You know, he's well within his amounts. Uh, the trial judge says, no, unless Frank Marzano is by name designated on the registry card, he can't even call these patients as witnesses in his defense. So naturally, we tried this case. It was a six-day knockdown, drag-out felony jury trial. Uh, we acquitted him on one of the counts, which is a total miracle. And I, I, I don't know how that happened. He was convicted on two felony counts. The really bad news for Frank Marzano at the time was he got sentenced to two years prison. Two years in the Colorado Department of Corrections, and he had 40-some pages of medical marijuana documentation on his person during the search. This is not something he concocted after the fact. He had it there. Uh, so he goes to prison. And you hear this a lot from our opponents. Nobody goes to prison for marijuana anymore. Uh, John Southers has that uh, almost tattooed on his forearm. He says it every single time we debate. You know, and, and that's just not true. People do go to prison. And in this case, Frank Marzano didn't go to prison, but he was sentenced to prison for two years. Now that, in my, in my uh, career, that's a bad day for a criminal defense lawyer when, you're, when your guy gets two years in the Colorado Department of Corrections. Luckily, we were able to keep him out of there because he had an appeal bond that kept him out of prison while the appeal was pending. So this appeal works its way through the uh, Colorado Court of Appeals very slowly. When I tried this case, uh, my youngest daughter Caroline had just been born the week before, and by the time this case came down, that, that child is walking, talking, speaking in full sentences, she has friends. I mean, it took that long for this, for this case for justice to be done from the trial. Uh, Court of Appeals said the search of Frank Marzano's home was illegal. It was a violation of the Fourth Amendment. So the Court of Appeals threw out all the evidence and threw out all the convictions. So Frank Marzano is completely free. Uh, and kudos, by the way, and thanks to Timothy Tipton over there, who um, uh, served as an expert witness in the case and was also the appeal bond uh, supervisor. So thanks for that work, Tim. Uh, uncompensated work, I believe. Um, so, you know, that is great news for our movement because, you know, but it's also a reminder, this is still marijuana, and there are still strong forces, uh, I'm not talking about the gentleman at this table, I'm talking about prosecutors, attorney generals, people like that, who desire to put you, to lock you in a cage because you're involved with marijuana. So be careful out there, I'm not trying to strike fear in you, but that's, that's just the reality. And Frank Marzano was, you know, a hair away from, from spending, he probably would have done a year, but a year prison for marijuana and for having medical documentation in his 
possession. What's going to happen from here? We think it's very unlikely the Attorney General is going to uh, appeal this case. It was a very strong, unanimous court of appeals opinion. Three judges held that this was an illegal search. So what we're going to do from here is we are going to be suing the Larimer County Sheriff for They still ripped down his plants and destroyed them, and we have court testimony that these plants are worth thousands upon thousands of dollars each because they, they tried to inflame the members of the jury by prop, maybe overstating the value, maybe not overstating the value. That's what they said the value is, sworn court testimony by sheriff's deputies. So we know how much these plants are worth. We're going to try to get it back from them. You know, where do, where do most of us stand? Most of us are not claiming status these days as caregivers. We are proceeding under the statutory creation of the Department of, uh, of Revenue and the, the statutory creation that uh, the Colorado Legislature created in House Bill 1284, which is a separate, extra-constitutional way to buy, sell, grow marijuana for medical purposes legally in Colorado. It's separate and apart from and distinct from the Constitution because the definition of a center is somebody who is not a caregiver. So a lot of us who have uh, taken that little trip down Shakedown Street and paid our fees into the state, um, and the state now has $7 million, congratulations, uh, $7 million of our dollars. I'm confident they're going to use those well, honestly. I, 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 I think they will be better than the health department in managing our money and uh, timely responding to the need out there. Uh, I can't imagine they'll be worse. The health department now delays nine months to issue this flimsy, non-plastic card that falls apart in the wash and doesn't even have the patient's picture on it. Nine months it takes them to issue these. Uh, that's outrageous. That, that's ridiculous. They can do better. The Department of Revenue, I'm confident, will do better. Um, so most of you are probably trying to claim status under this statutory mechanism. And I am still a believer and I'm encouraging people to try to participate in that process. I'm encouraging people to, to try to fill out those forms. And of course, the deadline is now passed to allow you to continue to do business. There will be more forms coming in for people who want to start uh, June 1st of 2011. But we are hoping that that process plays out. But if it doesn't, there still is hope. And that is the caregiver constitutional provision. What we're planning on doing, and this would be through the Colorado Wellness Association, which is hoping to merge with this organization, and, and we're so impressed with where we've come even with this group, and um, I'm proud to say that I think I might have made the introduction between MMBA and Castleman's, which is a match made in heaven. Um, a lot of us have, have had to, quote, marry. You've got it if you're a retailer, you've married a grower and vice versa. In the past few months, a lot of us were scrambling to do that. Um, so what is going to happen with the caregiver thing? There are a lot of horrible, unconstitutional restrictions on caregivers. What I need at this point, and I've asked for money two or three times and been unsuccessful, I'm going to stop asking for money and start asking for plaintiffs and just go ahead and do this thing uh, like we did the past few times. You know, when we sued in 2007 and then got the five patient limit thrown out, we didn't have any money. The state ultimately paid us our attorney's fees and probably paid well over $50,000 for that litigation from the team of plaintiff's lawyers that we had. We will not probably get the state to pay our fees in this litigation because we don't have a direct statutory way to get that. But what I'm asking for now are plaintiffs, and we need plaintiffs who fit all of the categories, the unconstitutional categories, and I've got some plaintiffs for these, and multiple plaintiffs are good, by the way. We need patients, certainly, as many of them as we can get, and as sympathetic as possible because we're fighting a PR battle as well as a litigation battle. I'm um, talking Vietnam vets, people in wheelchairs, folks who have cancer, AIDS, you know, definite objective medical diagnoses who nobody can argue with uh, the fact that they're ill and they need their medicine. We need caregivers. Caregivers who have been in the business for a while who can demonstrate that, who are not afraid to come forward. Uh, we need patients who want to change their caregivers 